In the Gospels of the New Testament, only in the Gospel of John is Jesus or Yeshua referred to as the Lamb of God. In reference to the book of Exodus in our Torah about the Lamb, now, what's interesting, very interesting to start off, is that the lamb in the book of Exodus, in the five books of Moses, our Torah, was a god of Egypt. The lamb was worshipped among many, many animals in the animal kingdom in Egypt. The lamb was worshipped as a god. Now, what God asked of the Israelites was to tie this lamb into their homes and to slaughter this animal in rebellion against the worship of the lamb in Egypt, which would have been the death penalty, or result of it would have ended in a death penalty. It's a death sentence. To stand by the true God of all creation, the God of Israel, the God of all, the eternal one. Now what's interesting is that the Egyptians worshipped the lamb, and so too, in the Gospel of John, the Lamb of God is Jesus, or Yeshua, who was a man, supposedly according to Christians and Messianics, who came as God in the flesh, and many worship the Lamb of God, which is pretty coincidental, considering the Lamb was worshipped in Egypt, and so too the Lamb in the Gospel of John as well is considered a God and worshipped, or the God, according to them, or part of the Godhead. The comparison is very creepily familiar. The same thing. It's a test for all of us to worship and stand by the one true God, defiant against idolatry. Now, this is the reason why only in the Gospel of John does Jesus not eat the Passover lamb or have the Passover meal. Unlike the other Gospels, they're eating the Passover and having the Passover communion. Yet, in the Gospel of John, what is he doing? He's washing their feet. Why? Because he is the Passover lamb. That's why he is the one who is crucified in John as the lamb. So, brothers and sisters, the comparison is there. It's true. The lamb, idol worship. Exodus, the lamb, was idolatry. It was a god of Egypt. Coincidentally, Jesus became the Lamb and worshipped. We also see this in the book of Revelation. They are worshipping the Lamb of God. This is idolatry. Basic 101 idolatry. God tells you in the Torah itself. He says in Deuteronomy chapter 4, starting in verse 15, to the end. He tells you clearly, beware. He tells to tell Moses to the Israelites. Beware for your very souls that you saw no form on the day that God spoke to you out of Horeb, Mount Sinai, lest you corrupt yourselves in making God into the image of a man, a woman, an animal, or anything that God has created. So if you believe that God became a man, this is idolatry. This is against the word of God. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. For God is not a man. God is not a man. The Ten Commandments, Exodus chapter 20. Anohi Yehoah Elohecha, I am Yehoah your Elohim. You shall have no other gods, plural, Elohim, upon my face. We are to worship the one true God and no other. That is why Israel only follows one Savior, because the Hebrew Scriptures teaches this. Isaiah 43, verses 10 through 11. You are my witnesses, he tells Israel, and my servant, Isaiah 53, that you may know and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, I am Yehoah, and besides me, there is no Savior. Only one. Only one. Isaiah 42, verse 8. I am Yehoah. That is my name. And my glory I shall not give to another. Isaiah 44, verse 6. I am the first and I am the last. And besides me, there is no God. Even in the Gospel of Matthew, 
when Jesus or Yeshua teaches how to pray, we know how Christians and Messianics pray. They end their prayers by saying, we pray all these things, or I pray in the name of their God, the one they worship, Jesus or Yeshua. But how does Yeshua or Jesus teach his followers how to pray? You ever thought about that? Did you ever ask that question to yourselves? What are the exact words of Jesus or Yeshua? Let's go to his words. What does he say? Our Father, our Father in heaven, let your name be sanctified, your name. Let your kingdom come, as in heaven also upon earth. Everything is pointed to the source, the Father. Give us today, not I will give you today, give us today our daily bread. Not a single word in that prayer that says, and you must end the prayer by saying, in the name of me. In the earliest gospel, Mark, someone comes up to Jesus or Yeshua and says, good master, good teacher, what must I do to gain eternal life? What does he say to him? First off, why do you call me good? There is no one good but one. And that's God. No one even good? He could say there's only one God, but he says, why do you even call me good? You shouldn't even call me good. There's only one good, and that's God. Well, wait a minute. If you're a Christian or a Messianic watching this, why would Jesus say this? To anybody who just walks up to him and asks him this question. He should say, you should believe in me, because I'm God in the flesh. Now, I know you're going to dance around and give me other passages, but this is explicit statement from the earliest Gospels. So even if you want to look to the Gospels themselves, there's a lot of contradictions with the belief that Jesus was God himself. And he teaches you how to pray. And not even Christians or Messianics follow this way. He points the prayer to one source, and that's the Father. Father. 